All right, so our next speaker is Teni Majekudumi, who is a environmental lawyer and expert, and she's bringing us a talk which is titled Litigation for Climate Change. Round of applause for Teni, please. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Hello, everyone. I'm very, very glad to be here today. And uh, as she said, I want to talk about my journey in the fight against climate change. It's a very interesting story because people always ask me that, were you always into this? But funny enough, I was actually a barrister. And I was just sitting in uh, the chambers I worked for one day and as usual I'd gone to court, the court didn't sit on time, I came back, the matter didn't hold, and I just thought, ah, oh, is this going to be my life for the rest of the, you know, is this going to be how my life is going to be? And uh, while sitting in the coffee room in the chambers, I then saw this magazine that said Kyoto Protocol. I thought, hmm, what's that? So I picked it up and I started reading. And then I just thought, this sounds very, very interesting. I mean, really, what is this about? But in terms, what it actually means is it's a protocol that recognizes that developing, developed countries are partly to blame for the levels of uh, GHG, which are greenhouse gas emissions that have been emitted in the atmosphere. And due to 150 years of industrial activity, they have now been placed a burden on them to make sure that other developing countries who are not going to be able to emit this amount of uh, greenhouse gases due to industrialization would have to stop short. And as a result of this, we have to then protect the developing countries by allowing them to benefit from some kind of mechanism whereby the environment still stays clear. And so providing an incentive for the developing country I thought, hmm, this is very interesting. How are they going to pull this off? And so I decided, you know what? I want to dig deeper into this. So I dug a little bit deeper. And I was surprised to realize Nigeria actually ratified to this protocol. Because countries, it's an international treaty. And so countries have to ratify. And Nigeria had actually ratified to it, agreeing to the fact that they are a developing country and they would want to benefit from this uh, protocol. I was shocked in 2004, how is this possible? And I'm not aware of it. That gave me the confidence. I said, you know what? I'm looking for an area to go on and specialize. I want to focus on this. And so I took the brave decision. And I went about and I did a master's. I quit my job. I said, you know what? I'm done here. There's something out there for me. And there's something I know that I would want to see, know more about. I quit my job, I got to the university in England, and I thought, okay, fine, I'm gonna do it on the Kyoto Protocol, the opportunities that are available on about the Kyoto Protocol for Africa. Anyway, the slides aren't working, surprise. I left on a hunch, and I got to the UK. I realized I was the only one doing something similar to this. I literally had to carve the whole course, the whole module for myself with my supervisor. He was so skeptical and doubtful that, are you sure you want to do this? And then I just you know, thought, you know what, don't worry, I have good and bad days, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So during my research, I found out about this, uh, the panel which governs the climate change body internationally. It's called the International uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. And the head of the panel is called, uh, uh, Reg his name is Pachuri. So anyway, Pachuri then says in there something that caught my eye. And I thought, OK, if he can say this, why don't I go ahead? And in there, he said, the impact of climate change is a regional thing. and it, means that it's, it's so critical, unless something is done, we would obviously be exposed to the risk. So I thought, okay, if he's saying this, there must be something in this. And then as a result of this, I went about and I said, okay, fine, no problem, I'm going to go ahead and do my thesis on this. My supervisor obviously said, no, don't go ahead, blah, 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 I did it. 
Unfortunately for me, I graduated with a distinction. Upon that, I finished my course, and on my graduation day, who was the vice chancellor, who was the person to give us the handshake? It was actually Pachuri. So I was quite, this just gave me the, the drive to know, it was almost like a silent go ahead, like this is what you should be doing. And whilst digging deeper that night, I realized that I had like a eureka movement whilst looking through all the reports and information about this protocol. How can we make this thing work for Africa in particular? And my answer to that was, the only way is there must be an incentive. If there's no incentive, people are not gonna realize that it's a global effort to change the environment and also make the environment cleaner for everyone else. And so I realized, okay, what is this? Fortunately for me, there's something called the Clean Development Mechanism, which is one of the uh, mechanisms that comes under the Kyoto Protocol, and it focuses on developing countries. This protocol, or this mechanism, is a market-based mechanism. It's, it's, it, it's AKA the carbon credits, whereby if you do a project to, uh, that reduces the amount of GHG, so which is literally a renewable energy project, you can register this project and earn carbon credits from it. And carbon credits is money because it's sold on the carbon market internationally. And there are three carbon markets all over the world. Whereby, if you trade this uh, credits that you have, uh, uh, we have reduced because of the emissions you reduce from this project, the money that you get from this is a lot of, a lot of money. I know that in Nigeria so far, we've had a few projects. And uh, the five projects that have gone the most that has been earned is about 220, 23 million euros is what they're earning per annum. I was excited when I saw this. And so I went ahead and forged ahead. $2.6 billion worth of investment is possible from something like this, from talking about environment, from carbon, and it will reduce the emissions out there, and it will ex make our environment safer for other people, a future generation. It will be promoting jobs, Ah, I have to get into this. I then went ahead and saw what is this thing worth? As I said, it's $2.6 billion worth of money. I said, okay, fine, no problem. What are the potentials? Because if, no, if it's only about money, it might not be worth my time. It's interesting, it's good for it to be about money, but there has to also be something else, because I'm very passionate about what exactly it is I'm gonna help other people to do. So, job creation sustainable development, trading carbon credits, of course, developing a market, and Nigeria as well would then have an industry, a carbon market industry in this country. Why isn't this clicker working? Apart from sustainable development, we would also have people who would want to be happy to be able to change the mindset and know that, okay, if I do this, there are repercussions of this. If I drop this uh, bottle of pure water on the floor, there are reper repercussions for this. I know that if I can, I know in Rwanda right now, if you go there, they don't allow you to have any plastic bottles, any plastic thing in your bag. You cannot allow it in. And that's because they've put sanctions in place. And so it's been a collective effort, something that the governments have also been involved in. So I figured, well, this is what I'm going to be doing. Fortunately for me, I moved back to Nigeria and I was able to be headhunted by the government. And they were, it was just a fortuitous time because they were also working on this kind of issue and making sure that a, a unit is set up of some sort. So I was asked, would I want to work in this and help us to develop this? I said, yes. So I was there for 18 months to develop this. And <clears throat> after that, I realized, there's some form of momentum going on, although people are not really understanding what it's all about. People keep asking me, what is this climate change? How does it affect it? How can you make people get off the streets from this? How, how is it providing all these avenues? I thought we need to have some kind of strict, strict framework to work on this. So we developed a framework for Nigeria. We worked hand in hand with the federal government. It was a PPP that was set up, public-private partnership. It was for 18 months, whereby the whole idea of it was just to start in terms of regulation. There should be a climate change bill, and from there, 
there should be a framework to devise on what happens next, capacity building, rolling out programs to be able to let people know what needs to be done because it's a global effort. This went on and I must tell you it was tough. It was so challenging. We had so many issues. People didn't understand. Nobody wanted to go ahead. Funding was an issue. But yet, there are loads of other people, other countries who are working on this. So why not? Why can't we do it? Anyway, we went ahead and we moved on. We realized that the trick to it is make it as practical as possible so that people will then understand, OK, this is it. So we went ahead and did practical examples. Wind power. We had uh, workshops all around Nigeria on wind power, hydropower, heavy industry, forestry, animal waste. This was even a really interesting one. Literally, you go into a place, and uh, there's a waste to energy. Human waste, in fact, could be used to power a house. Power is one of our biggest problems here. So if you can use waste to energy, and you can register it as a carbon, as a project, and earn money from it that will help your government, help the individual, why not? This is a win-win. People were amazed when they saw this happening. You mean this man's human waste is what created power for his house? We then went to another place in Kaduna and had some bottles. There were so many pet bottles. They used it to create a building. And people are living in that house today from pet bottles with cement layered in the middle. So it's all about sustainability, things that you can do to reuse, recycle, reuse. And it was amazing. After this, I realized we still needed some kind of international support. Because as much as the government has tried, this is not their main problem. The main issues of every African country is really defense, security, uh, food, education, not environment. But the truth about it is, if there's no clean environment, then there's no, there's no time to talk about security. If there's no environment, there's nothing to talk about. So why? Why can't we make this a priority? This has to be a global effort. So I went ahead and I wrote a paper, because these were my thoughts. I thought, ah, these are burning off. I need to send this off. So we were invited to come to a conference as usual. There were issues of funding and trying to get there as a team. So I sent my paper on. Fortunately for me, two days after I sent the paper, I got an email from the United Nations saying that they wanted me to come in to speak, and they also wanted to have a meeting with me, and here is my ticket. I thought, what? Is this 419? How is this possible? So I said, okay. No, but I responded, okay, yeah, um, are you sure? What's your name? I just asked different questions. They said, look, call me on this number. So I called, and I got through. And they said, okay, please arrange for, we've arranged for your ticket, and uh, get to the embassy, there's already, your name is on the list, you don't need to queue, just get your visa and just start coming. So I said, okay, fine. The whole idea, this made me just happy that there's some kind of positive response out there, and this can make me do things that we want to do here in Nigeria. And the outcome of that obviously led to a very good partnership. We're now registered consultants to them, and we work directly hand in hand in any project that has to do with climate change in Nigeria. So it's been good to be able to see some kind of positive feedback. But then it also makes you realize that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. If not, we would literally, everyone would have heard about it. There are still lots of people that don't know about it. Just coming here to speak here, everyone was like, someone had asked me, what's climate change about? What's global warming? Does that happen in Nigeria, really? Somebody talks about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, one of, the company, uh, one of the participants who just, we just finished a project now, he is earning about 1.1 million euros per year. And you, the crediting period for any CDM project you have is for 10 years. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. But I would still keep saying it. We need to work on creating more jobs. We need to secure a safe environment for everyone else. And also, the incentive is there. So it's a win-win situation. So I urge you all to don't turn your ears down when you hear about global warming, because there's a lot more in there that we should all get involved in. Thank you very much.